excited to introduce you to Rich Linder, who is the chairman and CEO of Center. It was founded by an experienced team of physicians and scientists. Um, and he is, I'm just totally fangirling right now. I don't even know where to start. I'm gonna let Rich start off himself and give us a little bit of his background because this guy is going to absolutely change healthcare as we know it. And I cannot say enough good things about him. So Rich, thank you so much for coming. It is such a pleasure to have you on the show. Amy, it's a thrill to be here. Thank you. And you know, I've been doing this for 30 years. Um, I've not only been an entrepreneur, an inventor in medical devices, um, but a patient. And I think that's what makes me a lot better at what I do because you know, you're doing things with a little bit more um, incentive and in mm -hmm. trying to help people. And, and I'm fortunate to be doing this. Well, can you give us just a little bit of background about you, like how you started, where you're from, and, and tell us a little bit more about your patient experience too. You bet. So I, you know, I grew up on the East Coast, um, trans, uh, kind of transferred to, to Utah when I was in high school, um, went to college here and decided to stay in Utah, um, actually founded BioUtah, the state's life science uh, industry association. Um, today, Utah is the fastest growing life science community in the United States. Um, Zenter, um, which is not with a Z, it's X-E-N-T-E-R, um, is my fourth company. Uh, the first company was, you know, a small company that I had built um, in vascular interventions and took that public, sold it to Boston Scientific, um, was then a vice president at Boston Scientific. Um, after, you know, a few years, I left, started uh, working um, at Coherix and then sold that to Johnson & Johnson. Um, then did another one in orthopedics. I had done two in interventional cardiology and uh, wanted to try my hand at orthopedics and, and that company is uh, uh, doing very well. So Zenter is my fourth um, and this is the largest thing I've ever done. I'll never have another opportunity to change healthcare and make an impact on, on healthcare and for patients. Um, like I will here. We have therapeutic drugs, we have medical devices, we have digital health and data, and it's a unique combination of devices that are smart that we've always used in medicine, guide wires and catheters that transmit information that's called physical intelligence. And we gather that information, we put in a global healthcare cloud that's secure and enables patients to have private um, data sets in a secure location where they can own it, they can control it, they can take it wherever they go. And then we can analyze using artificial intelligence that global cloud to discover new drugs. Data is the one wow. thing that enables us to discover more and we need more data. I'm just absolutely like mind blown by what you're doing and how you're really democratizing data. I mean, that is absolutely fantastic. So for, for our viewers out here, my background is in the EMR space and it's a race for all these big companies to own as much healthcare data as possible. So what's different about what you're doing is that the patient owns the data, which is so crazy to me. So can you explain a little bit more about kind of the differences? You bet. So, you know, many of the people who are watching may have been a patient. Um, the information that you have on your watch or wearables healthcare data. Um, that's great information that can be used to help you in your everyday life. But the data that's locked in a boundary-based electronic health record or electronic medical record, EHR, EMR, that's the stuff patients don't realize that they own. It's things that are diagnostic data. It's images. And you know when you have a procedure done or an MRI or CT, you own that, but it's locked inside that hospital's database, their EHR. Well, we're gonna to begin to break that down. We want you to own the data. You need to understand it. You need to control it. You could even monetize it. And then you could offer it up to people if you want to, you know, in a, in a de-identified state to say, look, go discover something with this. Go find a new drug to help patients with cancer. Go find a new drug to help patients with atrial fibrillation. And we want to do that. So we're asking for data. We want to build the XMD global cloud. We want to help patients get connected to solutions and not just experience all the problems they had 
and they can contribute. Then we've put the top scientists in the world um, at work using AI algorithms to mine those data sets and discover new drugs from them. So we're looking at new ways for patients to be able to own their data, control their data, and maybe even monetize their data in the future. Wow. Uh, obviously right. you've got a big following. I mean, you've got some really heavy hitting individuals who are coming along for this opportunity with you, like Bob Langer, the founder of Moderna, which if we didn't know his name a year ago, we know him now. We all know my husband got the uh, vaccine yesterday and has a dead arm today. And I know. <laughs> <laughs> and, Jim I, I so and, 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 and Jim Tobin from Boston Scientific, where we know you, you've had an affiliation before, but why would they come along with you? I mean, what, what really is the motivation and the incentive? Oh, well, that's a great question. So, you know, first of all, Robert Langer, Jim Tobin, Elazar Edelman, I mean, these are the, some of the most accomplished people in history in healthcare and medicine. Um, you know, Jim is a, I mean, he ran uh, Biogen. He was the president and COO at Baxter, um, not just Boston Scientific. Um, Robert Langer is the most cited engineer in history, the fourth most cited person in history. Elazar Edelman runs the Center for Medicine and Science at MIT, 1,100 people, I believe. So you've got these amazing scientists. They want to make a difference. They want to contribute. They're at a point in their lives where they're not doing it to make money. I mean, they, they really aren't. They're doing it to enable new discovery, to make a difference, leave something behind and contribute. And I think that's why people are here. I think a lot of us are sharing those objectives in life now. We're not necessarily competing. Uh, we don't have a lot to prove and we just wanna to get to work. And you know, I think that's one reason. The next reason is we have new intellectual property, new technology, new things, new discoveries. You kind of get bored doing the same old thing. So we need new information, but also new techniques for utilizing that information. And I was reading in an article that this could advance the field of cardiology specifically by 30 years. So I know that our audience is going to be very keen to hear how that's going to help. You bet. Well, you're familiar with x-ray. You know, we've all had x-rays or we know people have had x-rays. I have kids that I've had to take in for x-rays. Well, we had come up with a thing called x-wave, x-w-a-v-e. And that's the way we get signals out of the body. So the way we get signals out of the body and we, we develop sensors to, to basically sense a, a something that we need to treat. Um, we've developed that at, at Zenter and that enables us to really do more with the devices we've had in the past and make them smart in ways that have never been able to have been smart before. So the size of these sensors are so small we had to buy new microscopes that had a, a one to five micron megapixel, you know, so that we could actually see the dimensions of the things that wow. were Wow, that is, so, that's incredible. Yeah, and they, they transmit data and that physical intelligence data enables us to discover new therapeutics and, you know, drugs and devices. That is absolutely amazing. So would you classify that as like an internet of things type of device? Yeah, I think, you know, we'll, you know, in our device business, we'll launch specific devices. Mm -hmm. um, we could license this technology out for people. We want to do as much as we can with this and proliferate this throughout medicine. So I think you're going to see, for example, in the future, what if you had an IV catheter that not only was used to inject medicine um, or draw blood, but actually did other things. It was sensing different types of things, like maybe white blood cells or um, you know, other cellular structures and then we could deliver medicines before you know you're sick. That would be really amazing. That would be absolutely just life changing. It would be life changing. Millions yeah. and millions and millions of people. Like that's just mind blowing to me. Like this, oh, it's so exciting to see what, tech, what you know, really, really smart people and technology together can do to improve humanity. And it is so exciting to see what you are doing and the way that you've set things up and the people that you're working with to really, really do that. So, um, you know, digital health, we've all been 
you know, we're all really interested in digital health. Like at the very minimum, we sometimes track our steps on our Apple phones and then, you know, or we'll like look at our watches and we'll see, you know, how, how, you know, how we're doing, but what could, what could Zenter have the potential to help us do in addition to like understanding when we're sick and, and help us get medicine? What are some other potentials? Well, you know, I think um, some of those potentials would be images. So right now um, we could actually, you know, well, for example, when you go get a new heart valve or you get a stent put in your heart, the doctors will give you a card that you can carry in your purse or your wallet. And that card tells you exactly what device has been implanted in your heart, lot number, manufacturer, dates, things like that. In the future, we'll give you cards, but they'll have QR codes on, on those cards. So almost, you know, you're going to restaurants and pulling up a menu from a QR code. Well, what if you could pull up your medical information from that QR code and then start your own blockchain, your own controlled information um, history that you can take with you everywhere. And you can see it, you know, on your cell phone. You can, you can look at what happened in your heart on your cell phone when you get home. That is uh, are the kinds of things that were never possible before we can do now. And then the more you contribute that information, the more you add to it, we may be able to give you rewards in the future. We may be able to give you incentives. We'd love to have things like genetic data and epigenetic data so that we can discover new drugs. Those are the types of things you'll be able to do in the future. And so before we let you go, though, we have our Father's Day question. <laughs> So remember, you're here on our Father's Day show, and I know you have five children. I do. You do. So does Amy. You that's do. Why I, that's why I have none. Because same college, same ball. number of kids. <laughs> Basketball <laughs> teams. <laughs> <laughs> so can you share with us, in honor of Father's Day, one of your memorable moments? I'm sure there are so many. As a dad or as a son. So you can go well, in this direction. I'll, I'll, I'll do two really quickly. So um, this might resonate with some people. I, I have a daughter that was born with a congenital heart defect. And by the time she was about seven years old, she needed to have open heart surgery for that. So I knew what they were doing. Um, I remember that I had told the doctor on the day of surgery, I said, you know, when she goes on the on bypass, our, on the heart and lung bypass machine, please send someone out and tell me, and then send somebody out to tell me when she's off. When you fix this pole and she's, her heart is beating normally again. I wanted to know that. They said, okay, it'll be 25 minutes. We're gonna send out a nurse and we'll tell you. So I was in the waiting room and um, they came out, told me she's on bypass. I set my watch and I started pacing. Mm -hmm. um, it got to about 25 minutes and I just stood next to that door and nobody walked out. And then it was 30 minutes and then 35 and 40. Finally, at 55 minutes, they walked out and said, your daughter is off bypass and mm -hmm. things went well. And I will never forget that 55 minutes. Um, mm -hmm. The last 30, that was the hardest half hour of my life. And you know, I, it just, every dad wants to take care of their kids, especially their little girls. And, you know, so that was tough. And, you know, I love her to death. She's now 26 and doing great. And another story is as a son. So my dad, when I was a kid, you know, I it was, I think I was about eight years old in Northern Virginia. And um, boy, we had a big tree. We wanted to build a tree house. And Saturday morning, we went to the lumber store, bought a lot of stuff. And we started to build that tree house. Noon came along. I didn't want to do it. I wanted to go to the pool and swim. Dad made me stay and kept me working. And uh, at about sundown, we were done. And I'll never forget walking away from that big willow tree and looking back at what we had built together. And he said, son, you know, look, look at what you've done if you stick to it. And he had given me this word called stick to itiveness. And I know it's not part of the English language, but that's a word I use all the time. And I learned that from my dad. It's English if you use it as that. As I'm going to use it. That's going to be part of my vocabulary to my kids moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Rich. It's just such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for all the good that you're doing. 
in your family, in your community, in your work. And it's really great to know that there are people out there helping to guide the industry and uh, lead us all to better things. So really appreciate it. Thank you both. It's been a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you. And we'll be right back.